Hello everybody, my name is Nicholas Powers with Aero Electronics, and we're going to be continuing our series on Bluetooth Low Energy. In the previous video, we saw how a device advertises. Once a master discovered a slave after advertising, now it's time to connect. To make a connection, either the general advertising event or the direct advertising event types must be transmitted by the advertiser. Then the initiator, the master, sends a connection request packet that includes the following elements. The access address to be used in the connection is the first element that must be sent. The master decides the access address that will be used in the connection. The value is random and must follow strict rules, like the number of transitions or the number of zero and ones in a block. If the master has multiple slaves, it will choose a different random access address for each one. The CRC initiation value is a randomly chosen value by the master to minimize the probability of a collision. In other words, it becomes close to impossible to have two masters and slaves with the same access address and the same CRC. Next up are the transmit window size and the transmit window offset. The transmit window starts at the end of a connection request packet plus an additional mandatory delay of 1.25 milliseconds plus the transmit window offset. The transmit window offset can have any value from zero to the connection interval in multiple of 1.25 milliseconds. The transmit window size must be a multiple of 1.25 milliseconds in the range of 1.25 milliseconds to the lesser of 10 milliseconds and the connection interval minus 1.25 milliseconds. In other words, the start of the first packet will be no earlier than 1.25 milliseconds plus the transmit window offset times 1.25 milliseconds and no later than 1.25 milliseconds plus the transmit window offset plus the transmit window size after the end of the connect request PDU transmitted in the advertising channel. The next item is the connection interval. This is the time between two connection events. This can be any period from 7.5 milliseconds to 4 seconds in multiples of 1.25 milliseconds. We also have the slave latency. This is the number of times in a row that a slave can ignore the master device. Another item is the supervision timeout, and this is a parameter that defines the maximum amount of time between two received data packets before the connection is considered lost. The connection supervision timeout must be a multiple of 10 milliseconds in the range of 100 milliseconds to 32 seconds, and it must be larger than one plus the connection slave latency times the connection interval times two. Adaptive frequency hopping is a channel map that is a mask of the data channels that are known to be good or bad. Because there are 37 data channels, the channel map is 37 bits in length. If the bit is set to on, the channel is good and it will be used for traffic data. If the bit is set to zero, the channel is bad and will never be used for data traffic. This helps avoid some of the noise on the crowded 2.4 GHz band. Next up is the frequency hopping algorithm increment, and this is a random value between 5 and 16. It is used in the frequency hopping algorithm, and it helps to determine the next frequency based on the previous frequency plus the hopping number modulus 37. Now, small numbers and large numbers are not desirable because most interferers are typically more than a couple of megahertz in width. Small and large numbers would not allow you to move away from a bad frequency fast enough. Another item is the sleep clock accuracy. This is the value that determines the range of accuracies the clock is able to guarantee. This is important for long intervals and bad accuracies force the slave to wake up longer and can be damaging for very low power requirements. The connection is only considered established once a packet has been acknowledged. Establishment doesn't change how the connection works, but it does change the link supervision timeout from just six connection timeouts to a value in the connection request message. This ensures that if a connection is not established quickly, then it is terminated immediately. Now, this packet is sent on the advertising channel. The adaptive frequency hopping is used once the connection is established. 37 data channels are available, and after each connection event, a different channel is used. The next channel of frequency that is used is the current channel plus the frequency hopping modulo 37. Due to noisy environments, it can be known that some channels are unpractical and we don't want to use them. In the adaptive frequency hopping channel map, a 1 means the channel is good and a 0 means the channel is not good and it will not be used. The algorithm will manage to remap the good channels and only the good channels will be used, instead of losing time and energy by transmitting on the channels that are probably too noisy to transmit data with reliability. 